Hi guys, Drea from Aloha Plant Life here, and today we are going to be taking a closer look at corms, and I am going to be showing you from start to finish the easiest way to propagate plants from corms, and I will let you know that I have so far had a 100% success rate using this method. And we're going to be using corms from some of my alocasia plants today, and while we're on the topic of alocasia plants, perhaps you've seen this growing off the side of some of your alocasia before. I'm going to explain exactly what that is and what's happening there in this video as well. But alocasia Alocasia are not the only plants that you can propagate from corms. Here is a list of some other plants that are also corm-based plants, and you can use the same method to propagate corms that you collect from these plants. So what exactly are corms in the first place? Corms are just underground swollen stems that store food to fuel growth and help plants to survive any unfavorable conditions. Now I say underground, but depending on how deep the parent plant is planted, you can also sometimes see corms across the surface of the soil, such as you're seeing here on my black velvet alocasia. But typically the corms that you see growing across the surface of the soil are going to be quite a bit smaller than the ones underneath the soil. And so those ones underneath the soil are the ones that we really want. And because they're underneath the soil, the best time to harvest those corms for propagation is when you're repotting a plant, such as I just recently did with my black velvet alocasia. So whenever you're repotting a plant that produces corms, you're going to kind of gently start to feel around in the soil for round ball-like structures. And sometimes you won't even have to dig sometimes you'll be able to just see them as you can here on the edge of the soil. Now most of the time these corms are loose in the soil, they're not attached to anything. However, sometimes you will find that they are still attached to some part of the mother plant. So in those situations, all you're going to want to do is take a nice clean pair of snips and cut right at the base of where it's attached to the corm. Now how many corms you find in a plant is really just dependent on any number of factors. My black velvet alocasia is a relatively young plant. It's obviously only in a four inch pot. So I wasn't expecting to find a large, large number of corms in that pot. But I find that the more mature and larger a plant is, the more corms you are going to find, especially if it's been quite a significant amount of time since the last time you repotted that plant. So in this case, I was able to find a total of four corms. But as you can see, two of them are very small. These were ones that were growing across the surface of the soil, but the other two are quite large. And this is really what we want. So when we're talking about size of corms, really macadamia nut size or larger is what you want. You're going to have the highest success rate with that. Now that's not to say that those smaller ones couldn't work but they're less likely to. But instead of just throwing those little ones away, you might as well go ahead and give propagating them a try because you just never know what might happen. Now, if we take a look at the overall structure of a corm, there is a pointed tip, and this is the tip that was not actually attached to the mother plant. And that is where the new leaf development is going to occur. And further down from that tip is where the root development is going to occur. Now, there are many different ways that you can go about propagating corms, but like I said at the start of this video, I have had a 100% success rate thus far by starting them in water and then later moving them into soil. So in order to do that, you're going to need some sort of small vessel that can hold water, and I like to use bottle caps. That's right bottle caps. I find that they're the perfect size to hold that corm and we're not going to be submerging the corm completely in water. So it helps to kind of keep that corm half submerged, half out of the water versus trying to do it in a deeper glass or something like that. Now to prep our corms to place into our vessels of water, I do find that it helps significantly if you remove part of that fibrous layer that is on the outside of that corm and that layer is actually referred to as a tunic. Now, as you can see, the tunic is this darker brown kind of flaky outside layer to the corm. And basically I just use my fingernail to scrape that away and I only scrape it off half of the corm and I make sure that the half I'm scraping off is the tip of it where the new leaf growth is going to happen. Now, if you are having a little bit of difficulty getting that fibrous layer off, you can soak the corm in water for about like say 30 minutes or so, and that will help soften it up a bit and make it a little bit easier to remove. But I honestly have never had that big of a problem just gently scraping it off with my fingernail without soaking it in water. But once we've removed that fibrous layer, we're then going to set our corms into our bottle caps with water, and we're gonna make sure that they're just partially submerged anywhere from half to three quarters of the way. And you wanna to try to have that point where the leaves are going to emerge from sticking up towards the top of that bottle cap. Now, as it is with most plants when you're propagating them, regardless whether it be from corms or not, 
higher humidity tends to help plants to develop during the propagation phase. So what we're going to do is we're going to cover these bottle caps filled with the water and the corms with a glass to trap in that humidity. We're then going to make sure that our corms are placed in a spot where they're going to get some pretty bright light. Mine are actually sitting on the ledge in my kitchen that is behind my sink and that is directly in front of a west facing window. So they're getting a pretty good amount of bright light and part of the day they are getting a little bit of direct light. Now about six weeks ago I did also repot my alocasia maharani and I was able to find five corms in the soil of that plant and I did to those corms exactly what you just saw me do to my black velvet alocasia corms. And over the course of those six weeks the first thing that you will start to see is what I like to call curls and these are little like fleshy curls that are kind of peeling open at the top point of that corm where eventually the leaf will emerge from. Now the next thing you're going to see as those curls continue to develop is the start of roots developing a little bit further down that corm. And from there those roots are going to continue to develop and basically kind of wrap themselves around the inside of that bottle cap. And while that is happening you're going to start to see the actual first leaf begin to push up from the center of the top of that corm. Now during this time it is important that you make sure that you are maintaining that water level in your bottle cap or whatever other vessel you may be using and if it does start to look a little bit dirty or foggy just gently dump all of that water out give it a little bit of a rinse under the faucet, dump it again, refill it, and you should be good to go. Now, at this point, I typically do move the corms into a small glass of water so that the roots are not getting too tangled up in that bottle cap. However, I did actually leave one of my Maharani corms in the bottle cap the entire time just to see how it did, and it did just fine as well. I did have a slightly more difficult time getting it out of the bottle cap. The roots were really clinging on, but I was just very slow and gentle and was able to get it out and it was just fine. So regardless of whether you leave it in that bottle cap or you move it into a deeper container, those roots are still gonna continue to develop as that leaf pushes more and more out until you have your first full leaf. So once we get to this stage where we have our first full leaf and we have highly developed roots here, we can actually take this plant and now pot it up into soil. And when we're taking these plants into soil, it's important to make sure that we are putting them in the appropriate type of soil mixture. So I'm going to be using my forest floor mix, which is a very chunky, light, airy, well-draining soil mix, but also retains a bit of moisture since that's what alocasia prefer. And I will put a description in the link below for you to the video on how to make that soil mix. But basically, once we've potted up our corm after it's gotten its first leaf, or maybe even a few leaves, if you want to wait a little bit longer, you can. But basically, once we've got it potted up into that soil mixture, we're going to treat it mostly like we would the parent plant with one exception. I find that these plants still want that slightly higher humidity boost until they've gotten a little bit more developed. So I do go ahead and recover the plant after I've potted it up into soil, and I basically just leave it that way until it's developed a few more leaves, and then I just kind of test it out. I take it off, I see how the plant's doing. If it's starting to kind of get droopy or do something funky, I cover it again. I wait a few more days, another week, whatever it may be, until it starts to behave better when I take it out of that higher humidity environment. Now, you might be wondering what happens if you don't remove the corms from the parent plant when you're repotting it. So those corms actually can develop into new plants in the same pot as your parent plant. And that actually is one way to get a fuller looking plant. So if you want, you can definitely leave those corms in place. And perhaps if you are wishing that you had a slightly fuller alocasia, then I would definitely advise you to do so. Now, if you'll remember at the beginning of this video, I was talking about how some of you might've seen this weird kind of side growth coming out of the soil or off of the stem of many of your alocasia plants. What this is, is actually a stolon. And what it's doing is it is gonna grow and search throughout that pot for a place to actually put down new roots and and grow a new plant. Now I will tell you that the odds of that successfully happening in your home is pretty slim. And the reason for that is typically there's not a lot of room for that stolen to crawl and they really want to crawl kind of far before they root down and produce a new plant. So if you definitely are in a situation where you're seeing that on like a four inch plant like this, Typically, there's just not going to be enough room for that stolen to travel as far as it wants to in order to successfully do that. Now, if you do have a larger, more mature plant in a bigger pot where there's more surface area for that stolen to crawl, 
then there's a higher chance that that could work. But typically it's those quorums underground that are gonna have the greater chance of producing new growth in that pot for you. But I hope this video has left you feeling more confident and super excited to go out and propagate all of your alocasia quorums. If so, please hit that like and or subscribe button down below. And if you need some more tips on caring for alocasia in general, you can check out this video next. Thank you so much for joining me today, you guys, and I look forward to seeing you again next time. Aloha.